Kisov shoots it to flick it right in. Peter Angelo save rebound. Stastny stopped by Peter Angelo. I don't believe that save. Even as Peter Stastny. He can't believe the save that Peter Angelo just made on him. As Frankie Sparkling on that maneuver there to stop and rob Peter Stastny. He should get 5 to 10 for that. Oh. Hello and welcome to episode 76 of Tendy Talk. Presented by the Hockey Podcast Network and the BLPA Podcast Networks. I'm your host, Joe, better known as Wash Up Goalie on social media. This week, I chat with Ben Dardis of the Matamirai High School boys hockey team. Ben is a four-year varsity goalie who won the single-A state championship as a sophomore, set the Minnesota career shutout record, and is the 2022 Frank Brimsek recipient for best goaltender in the state. So, without further ado, let's get to the conversation with Ben. Ben, thanks for joining me on the podcast. It's uh, fun to talk to you, uh, especially after uh, watching you past couple seasons with my kids in the uh, Marmirai School District. That's, yeah, no problem. It's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, the, the one question I like to ask all the goalies I have on uh, right off the bat is, uh, how did you get started in hockey? I mean, yeah, you live in Minnesota. It's kind of a, a birth right here. But uh, what, what got you out on the ice? Uh, for me, it was my cousin. Uh, he was a goalie when he was younger as well. I mean, he still plays, but just in the old, old men's league. Um, but he really, what really like sparked my liking for the game was like the cool pads. I always liked the helmets, like the paint jobs on the helmets and the cool leg pads and blocker and stuff. Mm-hmm. I always thought just the padding was cool. And then once I started playing position, I thought it was super fun. Yeah. I mean, you've got a twin brother and he clearly didn't uh, think the same way. So we, we know who the smarter yeah. <laughs> one of the two, we know who the smarter one of the two is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, be, be nice to those old uh, beer league goalies. I, I'm one too. So it, it, it's, uh, no, it's fine. Yeah. Eventually I'm going to be there too. <laughs> yeah. As Kane Van Gates says, all roads lead to the beer leagues. And uh, yep. I think it's a little tougher sometimes for those of us that played, you know, high level competitive hockey and you get to the beer leagues and you're like, no, I got to win every game. And it's like, at the end of the mm-hmm. day, if as long, it, it really is in the beer leagues, as long as you have fun and there's uh, something in the locker room afterwards, it's a good day. <laughs> yep. You know, yep, it is, you know, as I mentioned, you know, you've got a twin brother, he's a defenseman, you know, have you two been in hockey together the whole way? Or, you know, did one of you kind of, take to it first and then the other one was finding like all right I'm always at the rink with you anyway I might as well uh put the skates on yeah for me I guess for us it was we were always in with hockey we were we always played in the same teams pretty much growing up and pretty much all the way until now we've played on the same teams and well it's you know it's been great uh I think we also I also have a triplet as well so my brother Jack oh he's also played hockey so <laughs> yeah, he, it's been awesome I mean uh <laughs> He didn't play in the varsity team this year. He played on junior gold, but he he's more of a lacrosse guy. That's more of his favorite okay. sport. But but yeah, all three of us have kind of you know grown up playing hockey just together. Not one of us has kind of led into the sport. It's just been all three at the same time. Yeah, oh, your poor parents having to uh, <laughs> at least they only had to go to one rink at a time and not get you to three different places up until you know like you said this year with your one brother playing junior gold, but. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. that that that's something else three of you I didn't realize there were three of you um you know and I mean on top of that I mean starting freshman year you, you made the varsity team at Matamidi which you know f- for high school hockey in Minnesota that's not an easy thing to do uh I only know of you know a small number of goalies that did that one of them Hunter Miska who's playing in the Colorado organization um, and then the, the few other ones I know of, it was pretty much either they had really low numbers or they were really small schools up north and they didn't have a chance, choice. Um, d- did your brother make the varsity team as a freshman too, or were you guys split up then? Uh, we were split up then. Um, I was, we and Grant both started out playing bands that year, and then high school tryouts came along. I I was the only one who tried out. Grant stayed and played Bantam still, and I ended up making the team, and he stayed and played Bantam, but he made it the next year. Okay, nice. And, uh, I mean, it, it, you didn't just make the team. You got into some games, too. So um, yep. it, it wasn't like they were just looking for a decent backup goalie. You, you, you had some playing time there for four whole years. Yeah, I mean, starting as a freshman, you know, I still had to earn the spot as well. Yeah. Uh, 
what happened was so when I was coming in uh there's a goaltender that was that left and I went to a different school so there's an opening spot for that starter and he went to a different school I saw the opening I tried out and ended up getting it toward the end of the season nothing wrong with that and I mean yeah you got some valuable experience freshman year which uh boded well for your sophomore year because the team did pretty well sophomore year <laughs> yep. you know you, you guys uh won your section you made it down to the x and uh you got to not only play in a state tournament but win a state tournament as a sophomore i mean you're pretty young at that point yes minnesota hockey players have that dream of going to state and winning but uh you know being a senior now do you think you were able to soak it in and appreciate as much as a sophomore as uh maybe you could have or should have? Yeah, I definitely appreciate it now even more. Uh, now that I'm looking back, that my high school career is over. I mean, every time I went to the tournament, even the last, we went, we went last couple of weeks, it was, it's been awesome. It's an unreal thing to do. It just they, even having the opportunity to win it, it was truly amazing. And it's just something I'll always look back on and just cherish those memories. Now you're a sophomore, you're stepping out on the ice at the XL Energy Center and Yes, those championship games, it's packed. But th that first round game, it, it's it's still a pretty big crowd, but it's not packed yet, but it's still intimidating. You step out on mm -hmm. that ice and you're, you got the Channel 45 cameras out there and they're doing the in introductions. I mean, what's going through your mind is you got to skate from the goal line to the blue line other than don't fall. <laughs> you know, uh, for me, I was always trying to think of something to say to the camera, like, hi, mom, hi, dad. But for me, it was all business. I always skated up and just, just give it a little stare down to the camera, all business. You know, it's, it's funny. It, the goalies are usually the ones that don't say anything. It's like, they're already thinking yep. about the game. And I, I've always kind of chuckled at the ones that say, hi, mom, hi, dad, because mom and dad are probably at the game. They're not seeing that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe <laughs> you know? your grandparents are watching the TV somewhere, but yeah, but mom, mom and dad are usually there. Yeah. That, that, that's the one that always gets me. It's like, if they're not there, what's you know what's going on they're probably not watching either <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, probably now was your brother on that team with you that went to state sophomore year yep grant was on okay. the team so that was his first year playing varsity yeah but sophomore yeah. year so a pr pr pretty uh special moment for the family to have both of you uh there when in state um that that's pretty cool um yeah. You know, as, as we move along in the career, you know, th this year, because it was your fourth year starting, uh, you set a state record with your 20th shutout over your career. Uh, I've been playing a pretty long time, and I, I don't know if I've got 20, 20 shutouts over those years. <laughs> th th that's pretty impressive because, I mean, Matamidi doesn't have an easy schedule either. No, it's been tough. It's been getting, I swear it's been getting tougher and tougher over my last four years here at Monita. I mean, not say that my freshman year schedule was light. That still was very, very tough. But yeah, this year's schedule was really unbelievable. But I think that helped us in the long run. Yeah, I, I mean, that's one of the nice things, I think, uh, at least for the goalies. When you play for a good team, yeah, every almost every single game on the schedule is a tough game. But to your point, it, it sets you up for uh, being comfortable come playoff time. Yeah, for sure. Get you yeah. get you ready for the you know top end talent that you'll see in the state tournament. Yeah, you know, getting back to the twenty career shutouts and, and that being a state record, have you given much thought to what you know, what that really is? You know that that you're you now at least for now ha have this yeah. record. You know, I mean, I'm sure sometime down the line it'll be broken, <laughs> but as of now, for now, it, it's sweet. And Really got the defense and you know my teammates for that as well because they're they're all, my teammates past few years I've blocked a ton of shots you know kept shots to the outside for the most part I still have to make some nice saves here and there yep. but but you know they've done a great job and it's been really great having having especially my teammates this year I mean it's it was a point there's like a point where I was so close to getting the 20th shout out or whatever it was and because we were so close. I let in the goal maybe in the last like <laughs> five minutes of the third period, like, ah, oh, they felt so bad. But when we finally got it, felt good. My teammates were all happy for me. And, and I was thanking them. So it was really great. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's an interesting point too, is, you know, 
it's an individual accomplishment, absolutely. But as you get closer and closer to it, it really does become that team accomplishment because they're they're trying to get that that shout out for you at the same time without anybody talking about it too. Like no yeah, nobody can true. talk about it, but we're you know you're all focusing on the same thing. We're it's, all thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, one of my last shutouts was in the beer leagues, and you know I had the shutout going through two periods, and we're at the bench between periods, and the one guy looks at me and goes, "Hey, you got the shutout going." Uh, think you're going to get it. And like the whole bench <laughs> just looks at him. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And no sooner is the third period start. He has a turnover that leads to a breakaway. And I came oh, up with no. the save and, and I, wind up right, get, right. I wind up getting the shutout and we're going to the locker room afterwards. He goes, I, I made that turnover right after I made that. I'm thinking, Oh crap. What did I do? <laughs> goes, it's a but, jinx. It, yeah. <laughs> Like he, he said that the whole bench hooks him. And I, and I, I even looked at him and was like, are you serious? Did you just say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure my team is just have one thing on the bench, but I try not to get in my, let it get in my head if they say a shout out or something like that. Like, oh, Dardis, you're so close. You're one period away. I just, I just pretend like I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. Playing. When I was coaching, if a goalie had a shout out going, you know, didn't say anything. It was just keep it up, bud. Keep it up. <laughs> you know, yep. do what you're And that is even if I said anything to him at all, because it's like a pitcher in baseball. You just get into that groove and it, let it, yep. let it go. Uh, feel feel yep. out how, how the goalies uh, react. And if they're talkative, talk to them. Otherwise just put them in their corner and let them be. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They'll figure it out themselves. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, you know, so you win state sophomore year, you guys mm-hmm. make it back this year and you came up one game short. You lost to the eventual winner world. You know, but no, Hermantown. Yeah, Hermantown won, but you guys yeah, lost. It. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a hell of a game. game. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but uh, both those teams could have won it. It just happened to be Hermantown this year. Yeah, it, that's right. Because uh, one of my college teammates went to Hermantown, and I always, uh, yeah. always pick on him and say, <laughs> when, "When are you guys moving up to Double A like you should?" Uh, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, "They are a good team. They are a good team." Yeah, I, I've told the story on the podcast. Um, so Nolsey, he went to the state tournament his senior year, and they, they lost. And the next year, our freshman year of college, every time they cut to commercial, they show this breakaway of this kid scoring, and they're scoring on Nolsey. So every time they cut <laughs> the commercial, like, oh, are you going to stop it this time? Uh, no, you let it in again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, it, yeah, Hermantown, good hockey team, and Warroad, another. I mean, it was good to see wow. him back in the state tournament this year. The, the yeah. one kid that had the headband looking like uh, Henry Boucher, <laughs> it was like how he That's wasn't sweet. number one on the uh, uh, hockey hair video. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, that that, that was a good look. But uh, you know, I, I was at that game actually. Your team was outshot two to one, and the game goes into overtime. Uh, Mm -hmm. and that was because of you, you made some huge saves in that game to give your team a chance to win. Um, you you know, obviously not a way any goalie wants to see the game end, but after the game, were you able to take a moment and just kind of take it in? You know, it's, it's pretty much your last game. You're at the state tournament, you know, you got the family, you got this classmates in the stands. Were you able to at least take a moment and kind of soak it in? Yeah, like the whole time, like my back of my head through the whole tournament, I was like, yeah, I know I want to win, but this this is for sure my last time ever being here, no matter what happened. So every single moment I'm on the ice, take it in, because you never know. <laughs> it's probably, it could be my last time skating on the X. Yeah. So I'll just take every moment in and yeah, and just, you know, cherish it and play my best and have fun. You know, and for you know, the listeners that aren't from Minnesota, you know, explain what it's like going out there for the state tournament with that, that place just packed. Cause I mean, a regular game, you might have a couple hundred, you know, filling Aldrich arena, but you got 18,000 standing room only for some of these games. Yep. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, especially when you get on the ice and you hear the fans go wild. I mean, it almost feels like you're in a real NHL game. I mean, with the with the crowd noise and being at the you know X and just with all the cool things you get to be a part of the state tournament, it really they really make you feel like, you know, you're an almost an NHL player. Really, Bauer does a really nice job with the tournament way they run things. So it's it's really cool, just a great a really great experience, just representing your town in front of that many people. 
Yeah, and I, I've been taking my son to the Let's Play Hockey Expo for about 10, 11 years now. And for whatever reason, this is the first time we actually bought tickets to a game because we, we always go on Friday and, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, we're, we're going to go down there. And and he goes, well, you know, Matamita is playing at 11. And he's like, yeah, the Expo opens at Ten and I could just kind of tell. He's like, "Well, can we go to the game too?" It's like, "Let's see if there's tickets." Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> we got some and we went. And I, I think we'll probably wind up doing that every year now, at least going to those semifinal games because those final oh, games sure. are so they're sold out before they even go on sale. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, a lot of fans come up for the final stuff. So yeah, it's really great. I mean, the semifinals, the finals, oh, they're all great games and super fun atmosphere. Yeah, and yeah. You know, walking around, it's kind of fun, too, because you got fans from all around the state at those games. Yeah, you got fans from the oh, two yeah. schools playing, but you see shirts and hats and from all over the state, you know, kids, parents, you know, parents with their kids. It's, it's just it's it's what it's supposed to be. Yep. You know, it's like a tradition. Everyone comes out and, you know, even if your team is not there, you still come out and watch the games because they're going to be very entertaining. Yep. It, that's like, kind of like how it is in Minnesota. It's like a tradition and everyone is super excited once the kind of March comes, you know, March comes around and everyone's he's really jacked yeah. up and excited to get down to St. Paul and watch the tournament. Oh, I, I love it because it's almost like the unofficial start of spring in Minnesota. Um, kind of is. Even though we usually get that state tournament blizzard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> which we didn't get this year. Knock on wood as we're talking possible snow tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we were talking... <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about it in the locker room uh, Sunday night, and we all said, if it snows, it snows. We're not getting the shovels out. I said, well, I, I might get the snowblower out because I got a little bit of gas left in there, and I need to use it up. <laughs> but if that only gets yeah. me one strip on the, the driveway, that, that's all that happens, you know? Yeah, hopefully the snow melts pretty quickly after, but... <laughs> yeah, as, as my grandpa used to say, God put it there, he'll take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so after the state tournament, you know, you find out you're the 2022 Frank Bismarck winner. That That is the best goaltender in the state and doesn't usually go to a single A goalie. Uh, although two out of the three finalists were single A goalies. I forget who the third one was. Um, what does that honor mean to you? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a great honor for me. Uh, I mean, I mean, again, with the, my teams in the past, I mean, I've had great guys in front of me making me look good, but it's just awesome being able to represent your community. And it's rare for a Miami to get to, We've only had, I think, two other guys that gone to the Mr. Hockey ceremony, not for the Frank Bislick, for, mm -hmm. but to be up for the Mr. Hockey Award. So it's super rare for a Miami to get And it's awesome to represent our town and stuff. So it's it's really great. And, and I'm super excited and happy that we, I've won the award. But the other two goalies were just as deserving as I was, too, to win the award. It was probably super tough to kind of pick the winner but you know that's just kind of the way it is and I, 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 I wish the other two goalies you know the best of luck in their futures as well well and as a hockey fan that semifinal game against Warroad I mean you had two of the three finalists going up against each other so you knew it was going to be a good game and um, you know while, while you made some incredible saves the, the other fellow made some really nice saves to yeah. give his team a chance too because yeah. it, it could have been a lopsided game one way or the other if it wasn't for the two of you. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was, that was a very fun back and forth game. I'm sure everyone watching it was super entertaining. And it was super fun to play in as well. Yeah. It, it, well, like you said, it was fun to watch. Now, where I was sitting was slightly behind what I would call the, the family section. Um, and I know you had some friends and family there because they had some Dardis t-shirts with both yeah. you and your brother's numbers on there. And uh I don't know if it was a mom or sister or a cousin or what, but was holding up a sign with uh, we love our goalie. And I, I <laughs> my heart kind of broke for him toward the end of the game because just their emotion of, you know, watching you and your brother and know, knowing that uh, one, it, it wasn't just losing the game, but it was also that, that realization that it's the end of the high school career and just seeing those emotions come out of them. I, I I almost wanted to go down there and give them a hug, but they probably would have looked at me like, who's this with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But yeah, yeah. yeah, for me and my brother, it was, you know, it was sad that our, it's bittersweet though, because now we're on to 
and that hopefully we're on the next level in our careers or junior hockey and stuff. So it's been yeah. a great past few years. So what, what does the future hold? You know, are you committed to play somewhere next year or is it still um, kind of up in the air? It's still up in the air. Uh, I've been talking to a few junior teams, but it's just kind of just talk right now and they're kind of waiting and seeing what their goalie situation looks like. And I guess for goalies, I know it's kind of a longer process to kind of find yeah. teams and stuff like that. But for me, I'm just kind of staying patient, keep working hard, and hope, I'm hopefully an opportunity opens up somewhere that I can take and run with it. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of teams would be silly not to give you a look. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll land somewhere. So that that's that's for sure. Is is your brother looking to go play juniors too, or you know, what are yep. his plans? Yeah, Grant's looking to play juniors as well. Uh, he's kind of a similar boat I am. Just you know, looking for a good opportunity and hopefully you know someone can give us one and we can just take it. Yeah, and I mean, in a perfect world, it'd be on the same team. But uh, as you go further yeah. <laughs> on, the, the likelihood of that, you know, becomes uh, smaller and smaller, as we know. Yep. Um, yep. D- did you have any colleges even looking at you? Is that an option? Um, colleges, as of now, no. I know with goaltending, the colleges tend to look at older goaltenders. Yep. I mean, unless, they, you know, there's some other exceptions to that, to that of course, but for most of the goaltenders, they pick, you know, 20 year old, 21 year old goaltenders. So I know that I'll have to prove myself in juniors first yep. to get the college looks and stuff like that. So yeah, well, we'll see in the future. Yeah. And, and it's funny because when I graduated, I mean, you had kids, usually the D1 players were playing some juniors, but a lot of, you know, there were still a good number of kids that went from high school to uh, college, but at the division three level where I played, it was usually, you know, a couple guys on the roster that played junior, but it was mostly kids that wanted to continue their education, but not go to juniors. You know, they, they were ready to keep yep. it moving, but still play hockey. And now it seems like even at the division three level, I look through, you know, the, the Mayak rosters and darn near every single kid was playing junior hockey last year, yep. not just NA three. They were probably playing, you know, in the USHL, the NAHL. Yep. It's, it's yep. just crazy on how that expectation and requirement has almost been put in place. Yep. And I went and watched uh, Augsburg St. Olaf game, the IMAC championship just yeah. to kind of see what it was like. And those guys, they can, they skate hard and they shoot hard and they're just, you know, they're pretty good. And, you know, they're, they're like people think division three is not, as good but there's a lot of good players that play division three hockey so whatever my goal is at the end of it well first of all i'm going to try to play division one of course but yeah division three hockey is you know it's not and that's not a bad place to land either yeah i mean especially in the mayak you know i i think we're almost uh spoiled to have such a good division three uh conference in minnesota where pretty much anywhere you are in the state you're within a decent driving distance to get to a Mayak team, you know, yep. not, not pressuring you, but if you want to play <laughs> D3, you know, St. Mary's is a great place to go. You know, it's got a good mm-hmm. Matamidi connection with the red pads and the, um, the Mars boys. They, they all went down yep. there. In fact, I played with one Demars with the younger Demars boy and the older one lives right down the street from me. So mm-hmm. <laughs> there, there's cool. a nice little Matamidi connection down there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, but I, I have a feeling you'll be playing at the Division One level. Uh, so <laughs> there, there is I'm that. Open. Well, I'm working uh, hard. So, you know, you're, you're waiting to hear on your next step. Clearly, there's going to be a team knocking on the door at, at some point here, but we can't ignore your style. Mm-hmm. You know, you used to have those nice V8s and Matamidi colors, but, you know, <laughs> This year, you had the, the uh, pulse set up with the, the Matamidi blue and gold. Were those V9s or were they uh, SLRs? Um, honestly, so my cousin, my, I have uh, Nate Smith, my cousin. He's a Bond rat. Okay. So he kind of helped me customize the pads a little bit. So they're like a mixture of like a UE, UE8 and like, 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 I don't know, the straps are all bit, like they're not like a certain pad there's like a combination of like three different bond pads in there so it's super cool i don't know i don't know how to explain it it's just like yeah the, it's like, like a the pad. <laughs> yeah right pretty much so it's super cool and i thank him a lot because you know with he's able to because since he works with bond he knows what customizations i could work with and stuff like that so the pads so far have been they've been worked really well yeah and i just upgraded to some v9s this year 
I had some old legacy 4000s I bought in 1999. <laughs> so a nice old sosh pad with a lot of buckles on there. And, you know, I, I had to go in, I, I worked with uh, Tori over at General Sports in Edina to get, uh, you know, to, to kind of mold yeah. that pad to, you know, like you get it so it fit your styles because I wanted it. He's like, yeah, we, we had to do a little bit on the back end to make sure it was softer than the regular stock pad and, you know, some of those yep. things. And uh, I, I can't say it enough. Yeah, you, you can go online and fill out the order forms and everything and take it to your local pro shop. But working with a rep or somebody knowledgeable at the pro shop goes a long way. Um, for sure. It, it's, it's worth doing, that's for sure. And, yep. and if you do that, you can usually get a pretty sweet graphic instead of the stock one yep. so that you stick out yep. a little bit. I mean, like I said, you have the pulse graphic. I, I went with the old uh, legacy bullseye graphic because that's what I had before. So it's like, why change it mm -hmm. now after all yeah, these? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, keep it consistent. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it sounds like you're kind, kind of a Vaughn guy as well because, you know. Oh, for sure. They're, I don't know, I. I know that all the other pads are still great pads, but I, I just, I love my Vons. They're just built yeah. so, so well. Yep. It, yeah. it, they're great. And they're, they're pretty durable and they're light. You know, they don't break down super easily. They're, you know, for me, for my pads, I didn't want, since I like a really soft kind of pad. Yep. Same. Since like for my style, it's kind of like, I don't, I just don't like a stiffer pad. Yeah. So what he kind of did was like, we kind of customized it where it was still soft, but it still had like, like, like i don't know like a carbon core to it or something like that just to keep it so it wouldn't break down and shrink so quickly yep. yeah so that's what i kind of liked about my the set i have right now so it doesn't break down and shrink because my, my other pads they weren't like that because i like because uh we didn't necessarily we customized them but we didn't customize them that much so they kind of broke down a little mm -hmm. quicker than these ones so the ones I, I have now so i have a feeling if uh we opened up our pads they'd probably be pretty darn similar on the inside the straps would be yep. different you know and i i know our straps are different because just out of principle i had to make sure i had uh some buckles <laughs> on there after all yep. those years is like i i have one at the top that serves absolutely no purpose but it's like <laughs> nope i i need one buckle on there and it, yep. one of my teammates was skating by like a week or two ago and he's like is that pad okay? or is that strap okay it doesn't look like it's doing anything it's like it's not but it's fine <laughs> it's just there don't yeah. worry about it <laughs> it really is there for looks <laughs> um yep. you know one thing i noticed this year watching the state tournament i i don't know what it was but i think there was only one goalie out of all the games I watched that actually had a painted mask. Like every single goalie, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't only that all the goalies had plain masks, yeah. but you all had white masks too. Like, is that, yep. <laughs> is that the new white goalie pads? It's just a plain white mask or. Yeah. I mean, like I remember my freshman year, uh, I, I started out playing, I had a black mask. Yeah. And the, and I had the players going, you got to switch to a white white mask man like that's just like the high i guess in minnesota high school hockey the white mask is the way to go there's a few black masks out there and i don't think they look bad at all but i guess a lot of goalies like the white mask and i, I like it too you know i wish i would have gotten my patent but i just like by the time i wanted patent painted like i was like already I could my junior year was almost done i was like oh there's not really a ton of point in getting it painted it's i'm yeah. almost done with high school so i guess i'll either get it painted for juniors or wherever i end up for college yeah, and it was just one of those observations because usually, you know, a lot of the goalies have something on their mask. And this year, I was like, every single one just has a plain <laughs> white mask. You know, you might have, you know, one of the team helmet stickers on the forehead or on the sides. Yep. That was it. I was like, is there a new trend going on that I'm not aware of? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, Other uh, than the uh, painted mask, it's a lot of goalies like to wear white helmets. Yeah, where I've I've got the black helmet, but that's also because my pads are mostly black. So I, yeah, I, I was about to buy a white helmet, and then I was like, wait a minute, a white helmet would stick out with my pads. It just it, yeah, um, you gotta match the pads. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, maybe one of these days I'll get it painted. I don't know. I, I had my high school and college masks painted, and they they fit the the uh, the school teams. But now that I'm playing beer league, it's like. I don't always play for the same team. So, you know, what, what oh, do you yeah. get on there? So, yeah, you have to change it every, every season or something. Yeah. Or, you know, do, do you go and get it something personal, but then it's like, I don't know. Yeah. 
I, I, I'm okay with the black mask right now too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, outside of hockey, this is one of the things I like to talk to people too, you know, yeah, hockey is the bulk of your attention in life and, and what you do, but you know, what, what do you do outside of the rink to kind of calm you down and kind of get your mind off the game? Well, I do play a lot of hockey, but you know, I run some, <laughs> well, you know, in the summer and stuff, I go fish with my buddies and, and golf. I'm not a, a good golfer, but you know, I, I hit a good, good shots here and there, but you know, me and my buddies, I just go golfing and just for fun and go fishing and stuff like that. So not, not like a bunch of other sports, but just like activities like fishing and golfing and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't know that high school fishing was a thing until this year. My <laughs> daughter came home and she's like, so I want to join the fishing club. What do I do? I was like, do you guys have one? And she said, <laughs> yeah. I said, well, go to school and talk to Mr. Forsyth, which fun story. I actually coached uh, up in Forest Lake with him when he got done playing at the ECHL for a year. So it was oh, okay. kind, of, kind of fun to see he was now the activity director of Matamidi, but I was like, yeah. Go ask Mr. Forsyth for the contact info. And it turns out the fishing club is the high school fishing team. And so she signed oh. up just because she wanted to fish and become a better fisherwoman, I guess. And which is yeah. good because I don't fish. So <laughs> like, I grew up in Chicago. We had one lake and you don't want to eat the fish out of there. But oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, clean. yeah, you, you can, you can learn to uh, fish and, you know, be good at it. So then we looked at my son, who's an, eighth grader and we're like you're not doing anything right now you can join the team too <laughs> so yeah right yeah Something so in right. fact that we're going up to the school after uh the recording for fishing tonight there uh, even though the fun. the lakes are still frozen over they they meet uh once a week at the school and uh you know the, the coaches give them information about you know what baits to use i don't know all that kind of stuff and then they spend an hour they got these cool little thing uh things they put uh, like this little fish on their rod and then there's this bigger one and they just cast to it and it's to help them with their casting oh. to get good. Oh. It's like, oh, it's kind of cool, but it's yep. a whole, whole new world to me that I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. One of my buddies is on the fishing team and he was on it, I think last year and he, he was, he was good at casting. He always can put the, you know, the bait right next to the dock where the bass are and stuff like that. He's, it's actually a skill. It's pretty impressive to watch some of the guys that do it. Yeah, so that that that's what they're really p focusing on until the the lakes open up and they can get out there. But it's like, huh, okay, yeah. th this is interesting, and it's kind of weird how many eighth graders joined the team this year because fishing's weird. Eighth grade through junior is the actual like varsity team because if you're a senior, you've aged out because oh. I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of eighth graders on the team this year, my son oh. included. And, um, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's it's kind of a fun new thing. I'm like, if if you were playing hockey, I could help out, but uh, I'm just gonna have to watch you from the shore and say good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things I do on every single episode, I got a list of ten. I used to call them rapid fire questions, but they they usually take up most of the time, and they're the same questions I've asked every single guest. So I've asked the Bantam goalies I've talked to, and I've asked Eddie Belfour and Kelly Rudy the same question. So it's kind of fun to, oh. to get the answers, you know, across the spectrum of goalies. And the first one yeah. is, what's the craziest coaching moment so far from your playing days where a coach just lost it? Um, I remember one time my high school coach, uh, my freshman year, uh, with our locker room, we kind of have a phone policy. Uh, he kind of has like a phone bag or caddy or something like that, where you can put your phone in before the game. And one of the games, uh, we didn't do, not all the players did that. And he just flipped out at us and, you know, kicked over the garbage can, you know, <laughs> really just, we know he says, our, our, Jeff is Jeff Post, he's a really calm guy. It's too rare to see him like you know, yelling and being mad, but once in a while he, he gets mad and stuff. So yeah, I remember that. And it, it Looking back, it was funny, but uh, <laughs> just thinking about it now, it's just like, well, I, you know, it's super rare just to see him get really mad and stuff like that. So that was a, that was a funny little story. You got, you know, it's something over the over phone thing, but it's important, I guess. You need to be focused for the game and, yep. and ready to go, ready to go. So when I was coaching up in Forest Lake, you know, smartphones 
weren't really around yet, but you had your flip phones and you could text. And, you know, so guys were usually on their phone texting pregame and we had the rule, you know, certain yep. amount of time before the game, phones are off. They're in your coat pockets or whatever. And we go in the locker room between intermission, one of these games, and it, I'm doing my thing, talking to him. I was a little upset to the way they were playing and a phone starts ringing. And I'm like, <laughs> who's flipping phone is ringing? You guys know better. Blah, blah. And like nobody's reaching for their phone, nothing. It's still going off. And I'm just, <laughs> and uh, so th- then us coaches walk out of the locker room and I pull my phone out of my pocket and I see I have a missed phone call. I go, oh, it looks like it was my phone, fellas. <laughs> Did, didn't tell the players that one, but uh, us coaches got a good laugh out of it. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. You're, you know, you're blaming all the kids. And then, <laughs> yeah. thought it was you all along. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, I don't ex- know whose phone that was. It yes. turns out it was coaches. Yeah, it was like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody wanted to check – but the best part is like nobody even checked their pocket. Like, ooh, maybe it's me. <laughs> They're just like, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's kind of yeah. be quiet. All <laughs> yeah, here it was. It was my phone. Uh, so, what is your favorite all-time goalie mask? Goalie mask. Who? And you can't say think... the all-white ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the I like the old-time ones, kind of like the Jason mask. Mm-hmm. Those ones. Uh, I if, I don't think you I don't think you can like I think the only thing time you can buy them is for, like street hockey stuff but like I think just the look of those masks is really cool and stuff mm-hmm. but the protection of it is not great but I think they look really cool. No, I used to have one of those Mylek ones for street hockey and all it did was protected your teeth from getting knocked out because if, yeah, if that hockey it. ball hit you in the in the head, I mean you were still getting a bruise as if you were punched in the face, but oh, you kept yeah. your teeth. Yeah, imagine yeah. playing an actual real hockey game with that mask back in the old days. It's probably not fun. No, no. You know, I mean, yeah, guys weren't lifting the puck like they were now, and they That's weren't – they say they weren't shooting as hard as they do now, but I've talked to Bobby Hall and Sam Makita and some other guys, and they're like, oh, no, the puck was going that fast. We just <laughs> weren't raising it as much, and we couldn't shoot it with the pinpoint precision as guys can uh, now. You know, yep. th- th- those old guys – they, they they were they were bringing the heat just like they are today they don't it's just yep. the top guys were doing it not all four lines it was you know the top That's two or true. three on the roster not all four guys yep. you know yeah in fact that when, when I talked to Bobby Hall he said he, he usually liked to try and get that first shot of the game right by the goalie's head just to get it in his mind <laughs> like you know ca- kind of get those yep. nerves going he's like yeah, First one high, the rest of them low. <laughs> yeah, getting scared, getting flinching every time he shoots it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So what is your favorite rink that you've played at? Ooh, I'm going to have to go with the snake, the, I don't, I don't, the, I, the snake pit up in uh, Greenway. I don't know what the official rink's called, but that's what that's a nickname for it. I don't yep. know if you've been. I think it's a call rain. Yep. Uh, that rink's got a lot of history and it was super cool because it's got like the overhead things on it. Like the, there's like a gold judge like hangs right over you and stuff. So I thought yeah. that was super cool. Yeah, I have I haven't actually been to that rink when, when I was coaching and we went there. I, I was uh, had to actually work that night, so I couldn't go. But I've heard plenty of good stories about that old rink. In fact, one of my beer league teammates played up there, played his high school hockey up there. And yep. yeah, it's, it's a cool place. I yeah, know my that. Year we had to play, oh, yeah, my freshman year we got to play Greenway up there, which was pretty fun and stuff. So yeah, it was a, it was a cool rink. Other than that one, it could have been IRA up in Grand Rapids. That's a cool rink as well. Yeah, I like that rink, and I, I love that they still have the old hand painted "Watch for Flying Puck" signs in the stands. Um, that that is a cool rink when when it's full and the band's playing. Um, yep. Yeah, that was one of the few rinks we went to where the pep band came out to, you know, regular season games, not just, you know, nope. sections or state. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. th- th- those are definitely two good, two good rinks. Uh, yep. what's, what's your favorite stick that you've used? Um, I don't have to go with, I don't use it anymore, but it was a sure what I used my sophomore year at the state tournament. That was, I don't know what it was about the stick. I just like, it was durable. It was 
it was wasn't super heavy and it looked heavy but it wasn't and it, you know i just you know i ended up winning the state tournament with the stick so yeah. that, I, 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 it was my favorite <laughs> yeah was that the sherwood composite or the old was it the 9950 um i think it, i don't know it was like a it was like a carbon core sherwood so it wasn't oh, like all yep. composite but it had like you know carbon core in yeah, the middle was... of the paddle or whatever how it works and yeah. And a little bit of wood like, kind of on the outside as well. So uh, it was durable, but it was still somewhat light and usable. So I, I, I really enjoyed the stick. Yeah, I, I, I like those carbon core and foam core sticks. It's just they're becoming harder and harder to find, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, they're super popular. A lot of goalies like to use them because the yeah. composite ones I broke. Like I used a lot of composite this year and I broke like three or four of them this year. Yeah, and they're and not the, cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're very expensive. They're super light, but they're just they yeah. break and they're super expensive. Yeah, I actually got my first Vaughn foam core this year, and um, I love it. It, it. You know, to your point, it's durable. It's light. Um, I don't, my old favorite sick used to be an old Cooper Reactor Five, but this one's <laughs> this one's pretty darn close at this point. I, I like yep. it. It's got some whip too. Is I try, I say try and play the puck. So I'm not very good at it. Never have been. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's actually giving me some confidence to try and play it a little bit more because of the way it handles. Um, yeah. So what's your favorite youth hockey memory? Youth hockey memory. Um. For me, I don't know. Let's see. Probably my Pee Wee Double A year, my second year. I mean, I guess for us, it was uh, for getting to regions. That was pretty fun. Our team just wasn't like we were good enough to go to state, but like the region winning that first game was super fun. I mean, most of my favorite memories are my high school ones, but, you know, youth hockey one, was it, it, the probably going to regions as my PBAA year was pretty fun. But if it were hockey in general, it would probably be winning state, I'm going to guess. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to top that one. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those that um, you're, you're going to be playing in the beer leagues when you're old, and you're going to be like, yeah, yeah. when I won state as a sophomore, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody can take that one away from you. That, that's for nope. sure. Um, nope. What's the best chirp you've heard on the ice, off the ice, in the locker room, directed at you, not directed at you? Ooh, I don't hear a ton of chirps, and if they do chirp me, I'm not really listening, but I'll try to think for one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think here um I I can't really think of any right now like other than you suck or you're, you're a sieve so that, I, I know that's kind of boring but that's like kind of one that you usually hear or something like that something stupid but yeah I haven't heard I'll, I'm sure I'll hear some good ones in junior hockey yeah you sound like you're a little <laughs> bit like me and that you know they're probably chirping yet you, you're just not listening to them you're focused on the game and you, you just yeah. don't hear it <laughs> I, I remember when I was playing high school hockey, like I, I could almost tone out all of that noise and it was just that noise. But if it were my coach or my dad yelling, I could hear, it. you know, <laughs> yep. and, and, and to my dad's credit, he, he wasn't, you know, uh, what I would call, you know, the, the angry hockey parent. He was just, he had a loud boisterous voice where when he was yelling encouragements, I could hear him uh, over all of that. It was just one of those things. Yeah. You yeah, know, um, especially, I mean, some of the rinks you played at that, you know, like at the X, they have even the higher glass. So you're not going to hear the fans no, chirping yeah. at you. It's, you know, I, I think that's one of the things some fans don't realize is the glass is a bit of a sound noise. It, it, it uh, is. They, they, they can't get, get the chirps through to you. In fact, nope. <laughs> I showed up to the <laughs> break a little early for this week's game and one of my buddies was on the ice. So I had to find one of those cracks and like get up there and, you know, yell through and pick on him a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's the worst post-game beverage you've had? Ooh, Nor normally for um, the older goalies, I ask them beer, but you're not old enough. <laughs> you yeah, should not, not yeah, have no, had no. any. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, what's, no, the no. what's the worst thing to have after a game? Probably pop my Mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, make your stomach hurt a little bit and it keeps you up all night because you're that caffeine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember Powerade when it first came out was just like this good watery drink. And then all of a sudden they carbonated it and didn't really oh. advertise it. And I get, get a Powerade out of the uh, vending machine after a uh, pickup skate. 
and I took like one giant drink of it and I was like darn near spit it out. I was like, what is this garbage? <laughs> like don't give me a bottle full of carbonation right after I skate. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those. <laughs> yeah. After after I acclimated and understood what they did, I was like, okay, this is actually a pretty good drink, but not for right after yeah. you, you know, <laughs> off yeah. the ice. Um yeah, that, that was one of those. So when you tape your sick, do you go heel the toe or toe to heel? Uh, heel the toe. Okay. All right. You're, you're, you're in the group with most goalies and I I've started going back and listening to this part of all of my podcasts. I'm putting together a spreadsheet to see what the breakdown is. And if I had to guess, it's probably about 95 to five that go heel to toe. There's that 5% that are weird and go the other way around. <laughs> yeah. You, get, yeah. you know, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I was talking to Connor bro prey, um, the wild e-bug and he, he really likes to play the puck and he's good at it. And he says he goes toe to heel because the way the friction of the tape is less going toe to heel. The way he plays is like, I'm going to trust you because if I did that, <laughs> it's not going to help my game any, it might help yeah. you, but not me. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, whatever, whatever your preferences are really kind of yeah, toe, toe to heel. It's one of those where psychologically you think that's what it is. So you go for it. You know, I, I had the, teammates in high school they would retape their stick and then they what always got me is they used friction tape and then they would take the wax and wax their stick and it's like well that that just defeats the purpose of using the friction tape because you're going right yeah. over it and then there were like two of them that would take a lighter and melt the wax so it got super smooth and it was like wow you're putting way too much effort into it especially for the yeah. way you stick handle <laughs> yeah <for laughs> you sure. know it, it, the wax and the the you know put it's not, it's not gonna help you score goals no like I'll, I'll wax up my stick just so that the tape lasts longer not because it's gonna oh, help yeah. me any you know <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh, actually probably nice uh, putting you know wax over it so the, you don't have to retape your stick after every other practice or a game yeah that, that's the only reason i use wax these days but you know when i was in high school and college and tape wasn't a issue you know i could retape my stick yeah. between every every skate that's mm -hmm. exactly what i did every yep. every skate a new tape job but now that i'm paying for it and i really don't have to, <laughs> to retape it all the time just throw a yeah. little wax on there and you can get a good life out of it uh yeah, that's good so what's your favorite number to wear and why uh it used to be 30 but now 32 and i don't i don't know why i picked 32 for my high school number but i just did um i just kind of I, I always wanted to wear 30 going into high school but the, a senior took it so then i just took 32 as a second option and ever since i wore 32 it's just that's just my number now yeah you you played so well with it you got to keep it right that was kind of the thinking behind it yeah i just had to keep it yeah you know it's it's funny because that was my thing too I, I was 30 and then i got to high school and it wasn't that an upperclassman had 30 it was they didn't have a number 30 jersey because the oh. upperclassman, when he came in, wanted 35. So I started out on JV and it was like, well, my only option was 35 or one. So I took 35. Okay. So that became my number because by the time I played varsity, he had graduated. So I was like, all right, 35 yeah. is my number. Then I go to college. Well, the senior had 35. So I wasn't getting that number. And I went to yep. the cabinet, found the biggest jersey in the cabinet. It was 39. And that's been my number since. <laughs> you know, it's just that's like, it, it's, it is what it is. Yep. Uh, some people are like, well, are you 39 because hot Cause I kind of play a little unorthodox, not because yeah. I'm good like him, but it's just, I do what I do to stop the puck. Uh, exactly. it's like, Nope, it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Even though <laughs> we so share a birthday. A... <laughs> oh, really? That's sweet. Yeah. Um, so the last question, what advice do you have for young boys? Um, you know, just have fun every time you're playing in the game. I mean, from when I was younger, I, I used to get nervous playing like just like tournament games or championship games. And really, those are the times where you can just have fun and relax and just play and work on your own game. So every time you get on the ice for you with younger goalies, just have fun and just really enjoy it. Because once you're older, especially when, when I'm now just leaving high school, it's not it's now turning into some of a business for hockey or juniors and stuff like that. So it's not it's the fun aspect is still there. It just changed a little bit. So when you're younger playing youth hockey, just really enjoy that part. Just, just for fun and, and just go out there and enjoy it. 
And, you know, that's great advice because, yeah, as you get into, you know, high school and beyond, it does become more businesslike. And, you know, yeah, when we're playing at that level, we love it. We're, we're yeah. doing it because we love it. But uh, that pure fun part of it isn't yeah. always there. Um, yeah, for sure. And it's not until you get back to the beer leagues where you get back to <laughs> the game for fun. It, it's kind, exactly. kind of funny how that works. And um, like you said earlier, when you get to the beer leagues, the sooner you remember why you're there, the easier that transition from competitive <laughs> hockey to the beer leagues are. Because it was about, about my, yep. first, my first year or two of playing beer league hockey. I would get frustrated after games. Like they're leaving me, you know, hung out to dry. They're not back checking. I'm like, wait a minute. Some of these guys didn't even play high school hockey. You know, <laughs> they're just out there just you know, know, messing around. I got one teammate on my team. He never played organized hockey until the beer leagues. And I mean, wow. The term ankle bender <laughs> describes his skating style, but you know what? And, and, and I, I bring that up about him, but he's been a fan of hockey so long. He understands the game. And so he's got great wow. hockey sense. And I will take him as my defenseman on a two on one late in the game with a one goal lead over some of our better skating defenseman because he's got that hockey sense yeah and, that's and important. he's just out there for the fun of it and you know sometimes he messes up and he's the first one to laugh at himself like eh, <laughs> it is what it is uh, but yeah for sure. you know and i i think it's kind of nice to have a player like that in the locker room too just to yeah. like remind you it at the end of the day we got to play a kid's game for an hour and have fun and you know, yeah. hang out with some buddies for maybe two hours. And that's what it's about. Yep. Escape life for a while. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's funny because through COVID and everything, and when we weren't able to skate, I, I think a lot of us realize how much we really need the game of hockey and what it really does mean to us. Yeah. You know, God, we, we didn't even talk about that. I mean, half of your high school hockey career has been dominated by COVID. I mean, you won the state tournament yep. literally the weekend the world shut down. <laughs> yeah literally I, I remember that we went to again went to the let's play hockey expo on friday and we kind of booked it through that expo because once me and my son were done we were picking up my wife and daughter and heading to the wisconsin Dells because we saw the writing on the wall and we're like we're getting one last weekend in and we yep. got home monday and everything shut down so i mean you you had a season last season yep. through covid i mean did, did they make you guys wear masks while you were on the ice for your games last year, or was it just in the locker room? Uh, they made us wear masks all the time, pretty much. So whether in the locker room, on the ice and stuff. So it wasn't fun, but at least we yeah. got to play. Yeah, you I'll got take to it. play. Yeah, and it was funny because a friend of ours, their daughter was uh, just getting into high school hockey, and she's a defenseman, and, you know, Pre preseason scrimmages, she had a goal or two, and she's like, "I never score." I was like, "Goalies can't see down low right now, so as long as you're shooting at your feet, your chances are a lot better." Because those game on, oh yeah, were, I, I think great for the goalies because we could breathe so much better. But yeah, it really did impact that down low vision. Yeah, you really had to like really track the puck with your eyes and stuff with your head. <laughs> it kind yeah, of trained a little bit, but. Yeah, like, but yeah, that was that was annoying to play with all year. <laughs> I did notice once I got to take that darn thing off my helmet, I my tracking down low was a little bit better. I was moving the head yep. as I was supposed to, and yep. not just relying on that peripheral vision. It was kind of funny. It's like maybe this can be used as a tr if I practiced, you know, I, and maybe throw it on every now and then for practice. Yeah, I think there, I think there is training things out there there's yeah there's type of goggles they put on where they kind of block your peripheral vision you have to just use the just like straight on vision where yeah you have to really move your head all over the place to really track the puck all the way into your body and stuff so that's good that's a good tool and stuff so yeah there's that one i i think it's called the x tracker where it goes over the mask and if you have the cat eye it's perfect because it just kind of comes under that cross bar and you know you just have right here to look out but you know they have those goggles too that you can use and it's just like yeah <laughs> I, I just really, really I, I need all my vision to see the puck on a good day so yep. I, I don't need to do that <laughs> but right. I, I did notice after I took that game on mask off I, I was moving the head as I was supposed to you know to to track that and it's funny because some people pick on me because I don't I don't wear a dangler and they're like why don't you wear a dangler and it's like because when I try and look down, I all I see is a dangler. It gets yeah, it gets in the way. You know, so it's yeah. like 
that that was really pointed out in the COVID times of skating. If I had a dangler looking down like that, I wouldn't have needed to look down because I wouldn't have been able to see it anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I'm not saying the people at Wareham are wrong. I, I, I actually advocate for them. They're, they're great, but I, I've played so long without them. I'm set in my ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> yeah, I think for high school, like I never, I, I don't really care about them anymore, but when I first started wearing them, they were always a little annoying. They're clanky and stuff on the helmet. And, yeah. They, you know, that division, when the pucks are shot low, it kind of got in the way a little bit, but you, you get used to them. But unfortunately I was never able to take mine off. Cause like, I think it's like, high school rules or something like that or yep. hockey rules where you have to wear one yeah yeah luckily for me they it wasn't a rule now but what was interesting <laughs> is the rule was even through college we had to wear the grid cage we couldn't wear cat okay. eye but now i'm now i know um ncaa goalies can wear the cat eye and i see some high school kids i'm told it's not quite legal but nobody really says anything about goalies wearing the yep. cat eye yep the funny part is this year um so the night before section final, so this whole, like pretty much ever since my sophomore year, I wore like a cheater's cage because they made cat eye, cat, cat eye cages illegal and everyone can point them out. Yeah. So there's like cheater cages where the eye holes are like slightly bigger. Yeah. And the bull cage. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't necessarily, I could see better. It just, I just liked the style better personally, but yeah. that just, that's just me. But uh, some guy, some, I don't know who it was, some coach called it out to the section official and they made me change it the night before my section final. So I came off that game with a new cage and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But yeah, it, it was fine. I adjusted just fine and stuff like that. So which it was, it was just a funny story. that like, ah, oh, of course, my last few games in my high school career, they make me change my mask. Yeah. But that's all right. Coach is trying to find an edge wherever they can find it. You know, it's, yeah, they're trying to play head games as, I, remember, I think it was the 94, 95 finals between Florida and Colorado. It was John Van Beesbrook versus Patrick Waugh in the finals. And okay. Van Beesbrook used red tape on his sticks. And that included his knob. Well, in the NHL rule book, the, the knob of the stick has to be white. Can't be any color. Because wow. they weren't thinking of colored tape at the time. They were thinking just black and white and black could be mistaken for the puck that was the idea yeah. of the rule so the colorado coach mark crawford at the time came out and he's like his stick's illegal he's got red, <laughs> red tape and the refs are like well by the rules it is so the trainer just took a strip of white tape put it around now now the knob's legal you know but yep. you know, <laughs> there you go That's it was simple. like just coaches trying to find any advantage they can and uh try and get in the goalie's head and most of the time with yep. goalies it doesn't work yeah, for sure. The, we, we us goalies, we got strong heads, so it's hard to get in there. Well, strong heads are just not much up there. One, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get too many fucks in practice in the head, so yeah. there's not much left. At work, whenever I forget something, I just say, forgive me, too many pucks to the head, and everybody knows <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not our fault. It's the player's fault. They're the ones shooting at our heads. Yeah. Or our defenseman's <laughs> fault for letting them get a shot like that off. I mean, come on. Get uh, the- exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get in the way of it for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, absolutely. Well, Ben, I appreciate you for your time. Uh, it's It's been fun chatting with you. Good luck with uh, the rest of the school year because uh, academics first and then uh, yes. good luck in the, uh, you know, the future. And I'll, I'll be following you for sure. Thank you. And thanks for having me on. <clears throat> no problem. No problem. And have a good rest of your night, bud. You too, man. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I'm excited to see where Ben plays next year. I know some team will pick him up because after watching him play in person, I know he has the skill and composure to play at the next level and beyond. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube simply by searching for Wash Up Goalie and I'll pop up. Visit washupgoalie.com for some great hockey-related content, my beer league hockey video highlights, and of course, all podcast episodes. If you want some Wash Up Goalie or Tendy Talk apparel, be sure to visit my Threadless shop by clicking the merchandise link on my website. If you like this podcast, go listen to the BLPA Big Show. It's the OG BLPA Podcast Network show where a couple of beer league players talk beer league hockey draft experience shenanigans and exploits from around the game. Be sure to check out the full lineup of hockey-related podcasts on the Hockey Podcast Network as well. There are too many lists here, but shows like Press the Zone Montreal Podcasts, the Catfish on Ice Podcasts, and 
the Devil's State of Mind podcast can all be found. I need to thank the band The Zambonis for allowing me to use their music on my episodes. You can download their music on iTunes or listen wherever you stream music from. I'm always lining up other goalies to talk to. If you are a goalie or have connections to a goalie who I should talk to, shoot me an email at washupgoalie39 at gmail.com or send me a DM on social media. Let's not forget, if you're a brand that wants to sponsor the show, be sure to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk. And finally, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment on the podcast platform you're listening on. It's a quick action on your part that helps others find Tendy Talk. So, until next time, keep your stick on the ice and your body square to the puck. Good news? Well, Dave, the pond?